Hello, my friends, Dom here. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be showing you a brand new plugin that was just released. It's Michelangelo from Tone Projects, and this emulates a really sought after, really special hardware EQ called Michelangelo by Handy Amps. This is an EQ that's a boutique EQ. It's only made to order, and it's very well known for the fairy dust that it can add to your material. Let's check it out. This is going to be a very fun video because this EQ is a really intriguing one. It's one of those EQs that I only had the chance to see briefly once in a studio that I had a session. It was in the rack and I was thinking, okay, when I'm finished with the session, I'm going to go and check it out. But I never had the chance to check it out. So when Tone Project sent me an early beta version of this plugin so that I can give them some feedback. By the way, they didn't ask for a video. This is not sponsored. No money has changed hands. They sent me an early beta version of this plugin. I was very intrigued and I don't even have affiliate links. So this is just my passion for plugins and for hardware gear that I don't have. Okay. One thing that I want to say straight away, if you're planning to watch the entire video, is that this EQ is not your average EQ. This is an EQ slash tone box. It reminds me a lot of the sound that you can get from the actual hardware, the black box that I have right here, the HD2. If you're interested, check it out and you can see what it can do. This is what this plugin reminds me of. Without getting into too much detail, let's have a listen straight away and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so I think you get the point. This is not just an EQ, this is also a, a mojo box. It's a color box. This can give you many, many different tones and I'm going to explain some things because this has many tricks up its sleeve. Let me explain a little bit of what's going on here. So this is the EQ. It's very, very easy to use actually, but I'm going to show you the entire plugin extended. So I'm going to click on show controls here. And this is the entire plugin. If you never want to go into the advanced parameters, you don't have to. But in my opinion, that's where the magic begins. All these bands add saturation apart from just EQ. So they will add harmonics. These will incorporate some perceived loudness into your material, exactly like the black box, exactly like other designs that I've used that are tube based, like the Fat Bastard, for example, from uh, Thermionic Culture. The one thing that you can start with this EQ is by using the aggression knob right here. And this will drive the tubes harder before you even start EQing. So if you want to reach your sound, if you want to drive this EQ into saturation, you can actually do this. Now for mastering, I would be a little bit more cautious, so I would just play around one to two, but you would be surprised sometimes on how much you can push this, especially for modern mixes. One thing that I want to say straight away is that if you start pushing this, you will realize that the level will change. So one cool trick that you can do is you can hold the shift key and then if you push this, you will see that the trim adjusts accordingly. So if you don't want to be fooled by the raise in volume, 
you can do this. This is actually really useful. Let me play some more material through it. I'm going to play my single Crime Reborn here, which is completely different to the previous track. And see, depending on the program material, you can push the aggression control even more if you want. In this case, because this is a very different uh, music genre, I can push it even more. Listen to the sub bass and what it does. Fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low key, baby. You, you need to fake it until you make it. Can't hustle. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low key, baby. So you can hear that even with the auto gain on, the mix sounds way more 3D, it sounds more rich. It's like something is missing when you turn this thing off. This behaves exactly in the same way when it comes to analog pieces of tube equipment. And what is this? When you run a piece of music through the black box, what it does is because there's tube compression and saturation, it basically tames the peaks of your material. So that means that you get a higher perceived loudness. You immediately have this impression that the material is louder, even though you've saved quite a few dBs of peak level. So that means that I can actually push the track louder if I want to, because I don't have these peaks sticking out so that the limiters will go nuts or the compressors will go nuts. And this is one of the things that I would use as a first thing in my mastering chain. If you see the waveform in real time, you will see the peaks get rounded off. But tubes have this great ability to do this without making everything sound squashed and lifeless. Let's talk about this section because this section is, in my opinion, incredible. And let me explain why. First of all, you can change the actual frequency, which again, it's not something that you can do on the original design. You can push its frequency separately so you can drive it. So this will saturate the tubes even more. But the best thing for me is these sections right here, the mid and side. So that means you can blend the processing to be either all the way mid or side or anything in the middle. Now, let me explain what you can do with this mid side. So let's say I want to only process the sides for my high end and maybe my air. So what I can do is I can go here and turn these sliders all the way to side, but of course you can blend. And now we're going to give a little bit of width to the sides with our EQ. Before we move on though, there's a lot of people that I've realized they watch my videos, but they haven't subscribed. If you happen to like what I do here and you want to support me, the best way is to subscribe and hit the like button right there. Smash that like button because this really helps me. And if you've been here for a while, thank you so much. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can always check out my instruments, the Apollo Expansion for Patch Shop and the Modern 80s Drum Kit, or you can use 
the super thanks button. Thanks for your patience, let's move on. By the way, I'm exaggerating. I have also the EQ scale here. So if you want to add even more range to the EQ, you can absolutely do it. And now let's go to the mids. Okay, I'm going to process the mids now. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually enhancing the top end, either for the main vocal that's in the middle, or for the backing vocals that are on the side. So you will be able to hear a little bit of uh, fairy dust on the sides when I use it on the sides. And quite honestly, for every EQ these days, I expect it to have some kind of mid-side functionality. Now, the thing that Tone Projects added that I wasn't expecting is this transient versus body control. So let me give you a very crude example of this. In this case, I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to add quite a bit of mids and listen to the difference when I go from transient to body. You will hear that uh, when we go towards transients, we get all this percussion enhanced, all the little elements when it comes to the rhythm section. And when we go to body, you will hear that the vocal is boosted and the synth. You know that you can never fail me. You only got my life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low key, baby. You, you need to fake it until you make it. Faint of hope. You know that you can never fail me. You only got my life to nail So, what it does here is it detects the transients and then it applies the EQ only to the transients. And this is great because this means that you can make an element of a mix brighter without having to make your vocals overly bright. Or you might want to pick from kick drum or bass if you want to use the low end just for the bass, you would just go for body. And if you wanted to enhance the attack of the kick drum, you would go transient. Bass. Let me show you the same thing on drums. I know some of you are going to ask. So in this case, I'm using the Hertz drums with the new expansion Fame and Fury that I absolutely love. I might make a video about this. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in me playing them and listening to them. But I want to show you how you can enhance the attack versus the body of a drum kit. All right, so let's play it. Okay. Low end. Okay, now as you can hear, when I boost the low end, the sound becomes a little bit boomy, but maybe I just want to enhance the attacks, the transients. So what I can do is I can turn this from body to transient and listen to the difference. See, now the low end affects only the attacks, which is what you want sometimes. I don't want to make my drums boomy. I want to add a little bit of color and at the same time enhance the attacks. Yeah. Let's do the same thing for the mid-range. See, when I go to body, it completely changes the sound of the drum kit because the sustains have been enhanced compared to the transients. So depending on what kind of sound you want, if you want to make a drum kit sound bigger, then you might want to go towards the body side of the slider. If you want your drum kit or the mid-range to be punchier, you might want to go more to the transient side of the slider. Now, I'm going to talk very quickly about the other controls. Um, this is a very deep EQ, so I could do like a mini course on it. Uh, but uh, let me explain what you can do. Number one, you can actually increase the tube compression. And what this does is it basically adds more tube compression. So what happens in the actual tube circuit. Now, the other thing that 
again, it's not on the original, is the blend between triode and pentode. Now, the triode is the original sound of Michelangelo. And when you go to pentode, you get a little bit of a brighter, punchier sound because it adds odd harmonics compared to the triode that adds even harmonics. I don't want to repeat myself, but exactly like the black box does. Then we have a control that's again not on the original, but this happens with tube gear. Sometimes you have these references between left and right channel, and that's why you most of the times have a trim control so that you can balance the left and right channel after the processing has happened. This is the reality with real analog tube equipment. And then we also have the crosstalk that basically allows the frequencies to bleed from each channel to the other. Basically what these two controls do is they give you an even wider stereo image. So let's listen to the difference between the triode and the pentode. I've pushed the aggression quite a bit so that we can hear the difference. It's a very, very different tone because we have a completely different set of harmonics. Now, most of the time when it comes to EQ, I'm not a big fan of auto gain. I'm not a fan of auto gain in EQ because I think it's working backwards. If you're doing an EQ move, that means that you want a certain range of frequencies to be louder. That doesn't mean you want to turn everything down. But in this case, because this doesn't only add EQ, but it also adds harmonics and saturation, They've added quite a few auto gain functions. So you have the auto gain button right here. So this will just do auto gain. And they also have a match button right here. When you click on this, this will match the loudness of the material. If you ask my opinion, yes, the match button is great when you're still evaluating the plugin or if you want to see exactly what it does or if you're not sure what it does. But after you play with it and you get accustomed to the sound, then I actually found I was using more the trim knob rather than anything else. And that's maybe because I'm used to analog gear and for me, trim, output, this is what I use most of the time. There's more things and I don't think I'm gonna go through all of them because this video is going to be very long, but uh, some things that are not on the original is the high pass and low pass filter that we have here. And also two extra bands that have the exact set of features like the main bands right here but you can also change the filter type. So you have low shelf, bell wide, bell narrow, and high shelf. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is this section right here, and this basically turns this EQ into a dynamic EQ. If everything else wasn't enough for you, this is also a dynamic EQ. For example, if I go to the mid range and I want to have a dynamic EQ, I can play this and I can turn down the threshold. And now I can choose if I want to boost or attenuate this band. So let's boost quite a bit so that we can hear it. And as you can see, the dynamic EQ works here. You can see a nice animation so you can tell that the EQ is working in dynamic mode. And if you click on this little button here, basically the behavior is inversed. So the processing is going to happen when the signal falls below a certain level instead of being over a certain level. And if you want to change the settings for all this, you can just click this arrow here and you have the duration for the transients and sensitivity, which is what this thing does. And then we also have the attack and release for the dynamic EQ. So there you go, my friends. This is the Tone Projects Michelangelo. In the comments down below, it's your time now. I want you to let me know what you think about it. And if you're one of the lucky owners of one of these boutique machines, let us know in the comments down below what you think and how it compares with the actual unit. And if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this video right here or this video right here. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Take care of yourselves. Happy mixing, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.